going on, Jerome's? Draft week is upon us now. Not every national media jabroni haircut mock draft is the same, right? Uh, especially the seven rounders where they're getting really deep on prospects and aren't really synced into individual teams' needs. But Chad Reuter over at NFL.com, he's been pretty good. And, and his final seven round mock draft for the Vikings is pretty damn solid. And let's dive in and check out the pick. So at 14, dun, 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 dun. Oh, a lot of craziness goes on. Like the the Broncos trade up and get Justin Fields. The Bears trade up from 20 get Trey Lance. What? Sucks. Now I have to hate the pride of Marshall, Minnesota. Well, actually, it's more dislike. Uh, Bears fan, uh, Bears players, Lions players, it's more dislike. Packers fans, dead to me. Mm. 14, the Vikings go, ooh, Rashawn Slater, right? 6'4", 304, 2019, uh, 90 PFF grade, 5 pressure, 0 sacks, allowed absolute stud, shut down Chase Young in their matchup. Uh, the number two overall pick out of the Ohio State University. Perhaps you've heard of him. Ah. And he has the best technical feat in the NFL draft uh, with Derisaw, just a rare talent. And we've said this ad nauseum, if he was as tall as his dad and had as long arms as his dad, Reggie Slater, former Timberwolves legend, he probably would be drafted before Penny Sewell. Like he could potentially be a top five pick, but hell, I'm good to go with him at 14. I, I personally do like Slater a uh, uh, little bit less than Christian Derisaw, but it's extremely close and I feel perfectly fine with either of them day one. And, and yes, you're going to play him at left tackle you want to give him that chance first because i think that he has rare ability there i'm unsure if he has the anchor to kick inside so ezra sorry bud you're gonna be staying inside at guard uh, for the foreseeable future into the third round since the vikings don't have a second round pick for some reason so my issue with some of these mock drafts is that they need to have the rounds scroll up at the top oh wait they do i'm an idiot anyway third round 78 enhance 78 the minnesota vikings go wide receiver two Two at well, baby. Now I understand that five nine a buck fifty five. Everyone's like, bah, how is it going to hold up in the National Football League? Well, similar issue with Devonte Smith. I mean, Devonte Smith is six foot, maybe a buck uh, sixty five. So. I think you'll be fine, right? So Tutu Atwell, son of Gophers legend, also Tutu Atwell. Uh, and also, uh, Thomason pointed this out. Apparently, he's the protege of Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, Teddy calls him his son. Maybe that will convince Teddy to come back and be uh, Kirk Cousins' backup for the league minimum. Just for drama. Just for funsies. But Tutu, pound for pound, might be the toughest wide receiver in this class. 2020, 59 catches, 924 yards receiving, five touchdowns. Also returned two kicks to the house. Dynamic, contested catch wide receiver. Like, he does not play like a buck 55 wide receiver, which could get him in trouble in the league, uh, to be honest. But... He's a really fun player. He's shifty, great return man, and I think would add a really nice element as a wide receiver three behind Jefferson and behind Thielen. And yeah, it's a deep wide receiver class. You could certainly go a bunch of different directions, but I like Tutu, man. I I do. 78, lock it up. 90. So yeah, Chad Reuter is my guy here. Pelissero, get out of here, man. I don't want to see your face, even though I like you. 90. Ben Cleveland, the Cleveland Cleveland show at guard. Ben Cleveland coming out of Georgia, six foot six, tree fitty, redshirt senior, three year starter, all at right guard for the Bulldogs. Woo! Actually, what was the Bulldogs? Howl? Woof? Whatever. Uh, has not allowed a sack in three seasons, which is pretty good in the SEC. 2020, 78.8 PFF grade, only allowed six pressures, nasty attitude, violent hands, and just finishes blocks. Now, he is a bit of a departure in terms of scheme fit wise, but change of scheme, man. Like, I'm sick and tired of not being able to get an inch on fourth and inches, costing you games, costing you the playoffs, costing you the division, costing you everything. So, anchor and attitude right away. Your. Uh, offensive line left to right is going to be Rashawn Slater, left tackle, Ezra Cleveland. Uh, if he's going to stay at guard, may as well move him to left guard. Garrett Bradbury. You got Ben Cleveland going from right guard to the Bulldogs to right guard to the Vikings. Shades of Artis Hicks, shades of David Dixon, shades of just getting it done. And then uh, the real deal, Brian O'Neill at right tackle, hopefully with a new uh, market level uh, extension. So you feel good. Plus, you got Ole Udo and Kyle Big Hinton Hinton and also Rashad Hill as backups. You're fine. I think you're pretty good to go. Uh, and also, Mason Cole just out there chilling? Sure, why not? Into the fourth round where the Vikings have four selections. So coming out of day two, you're focused all on offense. So Zimmer right away is just like pissed off and very itchy. Uh, I'm sure that he'll get his on day three. But you, you're good. Uh, you got the offensive line. You got your wide receiver three and return man. And you're feeling pretty damn good about this draft. And then, bam, bam, let's go. So Kyle Trask, 119, where... 
I have my reservations about Kyle Trask um, and translating to the National Football League, but I, I want no piece of him day two. And Chad Reuter and one of his previous versions of the mock drafts actually gave the Vikings Kyle Trask at 78. And I was like, no. But in the fourth round, after you've addressed the offensive line twice, I'm okay. I, I am okay. Six foot five, 240. And he, he has a really interesting story where he was the high school backup to now Miami's quarterback, De'Ara King. He, so he didn't start in high school, came into Florida, worked his way up, eventually supplanted Fleepy Franks, and 2020 blew up. Threw for 4,283 yards, 43 touchdowns, eight interceptions, led FBS in all touchdown passes, uh, second team all SEC behind Mac Jones, fourth in the Heisman voting, has NFL size, and you love the leadership. Kids got moxie and just just great characteristics for days, but you, you do wonder. So movement wise, he's he he makes he makes Nate Stanley look like Usain Bolt. Like he's got absolutely zero mobility. Plus, he got dinged up towards the end of last season. He twisted up his knee, so that, that made him a sitting duck. Uh, he had to sit out the Senior Bowl. Had to sit out the uh, everything, right? But doesn't have a de- doesn't have a big time arm. Accuracy is suspect at times. But I think that sitting behind Kirk Cousins for two years and working every single day with Andrew Janako, working with Clint Kubiak, could put him in a place where in a couple of years with preseason and just getting season and some, a couple practice reps where he could be that dude, maybe, 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 maybe. But like I said, day two, I ain't touching Kyle Trask, but fourth round. Sure. Sure. Why the hell not? 125. So the Vikings get big time value again. Hey, video dude. Now get out of here. 125. Jamar Johnson coming out of Indiana. Now he's a guy that I've quickly developed a crush on. Six one, a buck ninety seven, do it all safety, and in the fourth round, huge value. I, I would take him at one nineteen ahead of Kyle Trask. I would consider him at ninety. Now that's how much I think about Jamar Johnson. But he's a hybrid safety, can do it all, can be in the box, can play up high. 20, 20 32 tackles, four passes broken up, four picks, twenty seven point five quarterback rating when thrown at, which is pretty. It's pretty good. It's pretty damn decent. 81.9 PFF coverage grade. Just huge value in the fourth because we currently have him as our safety five in this class behind Trevin Morig, Richie Grant, Jevon Holland, and Cisco Thongsong. So getting him in the fourth round, and he's going to challenge Xavier Woods and Josh Metellus for that starting spot opposite of Harrison Smith. Absolutely. Also in the fourth round, 134. Vikings going with some edge rusher. Ellerson Smith coming out of the Northern Iowa small school gem, six foot six and a half, 262, 62 pressures at 11 sacks in 2020. And he is really going to be a fun sub package player because even though he outweighs some of your defensive ends, he doesn't wear the weight. Well, like he's definitely lengthy. He definitely has room to fill out a little bit. And I think he'll have to, like if he wants to hold up and be an every down player in this league, potentially uh, he, he needs to do that, but uh, it could be a fun, uh, just sub package rush guy, a la like a souped up Jordan Brailford was last year where we really liked him coming out of Oklahoma State. So, yeah, uh, in terms of just adding dudes in the fourth round, just another fourth round edge guy, just like Brian Robinson, just like Everson Griffin, uh, just like Daniel Hunter, who was a third round pick, spending the mid round capital on some projects for Andre Patterson. Go ahead. 143. So a guy that the Vikings have met with virtually, Derek Barnes, linebacker out of Purdue, where had himself a really nice pro day, 6'1", 245, team captain, 10 and a half sacks, 61 pressures in four seasons in West Lafayette. Now, at the pro level, he's going to be more of a Mike linebacker, so he could be an Eric Kendricks type understudy, play a little bit of special teams. Kind of reminds me of a faster, more agile version of Kentrell Brothers, uh, where he's tough team leader, uh, definitely humble enough to play special teams, and eventually he could work his way into the linebacker mix. Into the fifth round, two selections, first up at 157. Go! Noah Gray, tight end coming out of Duke. 6'4", 240, career 105 catches, 948 yards receiving, eight touchdowns over four seasons. If that was one season, that might be a record. Uh, But 4.6240 and a nice 6.9 second three cone. So he's got agility. He's got some speed. He's very much a move tight end in the mold of Irv and Gronklin. He's not even on the level of blocking as an Irv or a Gronklin. And uh, Irv, by the way, has really stepped up his blocking game. That's why I believe in him as a tight end one. But uh, again, would have liked to see more of an inline blocker uh, uh, like uh, Luke Farrell, like Stoll from Nebraska. So it is what it is. So the Vikings now have four move tight ends on the roster. So that's fine. That's fine. 168. Oh, Sam Ellinger. What up? 168. Vikings. Oh, they do it. 
They do it. They go kicker in the fifth round again. And this is what you can do when you have 10 friggin' picks. Uh, early D. Clary, he is a junior coming up. 17 to 22 on field goals last year. Perfect 52 for 52 on point afters. But remember, those are from like the two yard line, the old school PATs. Uh, and another fifth round kicker from the SEC. Good luck, us. So hopefully this will finally solve the kicker problems. Him and Greg Joseph going to get it on in training camp. Let's go. And finally, a sixth round, 199, eventually, enhance. 199, the Tom Brady pick. Probably just cut this out. Nah, it's fun scrolling. 199, the Vikings go Brendan James, the tackle coming out of Nebraska. Six foot six, 300, senior. Nebraska's left tackle over the last three seasons. Has size and strength. 88.1 PFF pass blocking grade in 2019. Adding him to the mix in terms of project tackles. You have Olisi Makauda, who also could play some guard. You have uh, Blake Brandle, the sixth round pick last year out of Oregon State. Uh, nice little tackle uh, mix there behind uh, Ezra Cleveland and Rashawn Slater and... Brian O'Neill. Hell, everyone can play tackle. Also, how did Jordan Smith go here? Oh, plus the Vikings have done a lot of work on Sam Cooper. They're actually at, at his pro day at Merrimack College. Uh, sleeper under the radar guard this year. Really the Kyle Hinton of this year's class. It's a lot of fun. But look at the Vikings draft class. Overall, I'm pretty hyped about this. So you got Rashawn Slater at 14. He's going to be your plug and play starter at left tackle no matter what. And yes, maybe he could kick inside to guard, but I would try him out at tackle first. I, I think that even with the lack of length, I think he's got enough skills. I think he's got enough agility to be able to be a phenomenal blindside protector. So, sorry, Ezra. You're going to stay inside a guard. Notably left guard because he got Ben Cleveland coming in at 90. And then Brendan James is going to be a fun project. Probably going to be on the practice squad for a year. Maybe he moves up. He's going to compete with um, Blake Brandle uh, for the backup tackle spot. And then you have a starting safety in Jamar Johnson. Great value at 125 in the fourth round. Potential quarterback of the future in Kyle Trask. And like we said, 17 times. Kyle Trask in the second or third? No. Fourth? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, it's like that meme. Nah. Uh, the McPherson hopefully will solve the Vikings kicking problems. Mm. And yes, 2-2 two, two is probably the most controversial one because he's the only wide receiver you drafted and he is 155 pounds absolutely soaking wet. But kid can ball, man. Kid can ball. He's going to be tough. Plus, he's going to feast on having tertiary coverage on him because you got Jefferson and Thielen and Irv out there. I think he's going to be a lot of fun. Plus, he's going to be your kick and punt returner right away. So, yeah, love me some 2-2. And also, you have uh, Ellerson who's going to be a nice rotational defensive lineman. If he can add some good weight and fill out a little bit, I think he potentially could be something in two to three years. I, I see him as like a souped-up Jordan Brailford or souped-up uh, Stacey Keeley, if you remember him, the UDFA edge rusher from UAB a couple years ago. And then also, Barnes is going to get in the linebacker mix and great as the Vikings 17 move tight ends, which is great. Can anyone put their hand in the dirt? Can we do that, please? Yeah. Uh, but overall, I think it's a really good mock draft by Chad Reuter here, uh, addressing major positions of need. Zimmer, sorry, you don't get your corner, and you have to wait until day three to get your defense. But the needs of the team ahead of needs for your defense as of right now. And if this draft goes down, given what the Vikings did in free agency for the defense, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Woo! go let's go beer thoughts on our thoughts chad reuters seven round vikings mock draft over on nfl.com let us know in the comment section below subscribe for daily vikings takes want to support that work post on the venmo but until next time skull production value